So hi, I'm Noel Maurice from That Was Easy AI, and I'm really happy to have you here. I'd like to welcome you to our tutorial on how to set up and install an AI voice chatbot on your website. Not the text-based chatbot that people have been using up until now, but this is brand new, a voice-based chatbot where you can just hit the button and essentially have your website talk to people and have a conversation with them. So, um, which is obviously a great leap forward. Nobody wants to type these days, we just want to chat. So welcome to our masterclass on creating an AI voice chatbot widget to go on your website, as this one down here on the right hand side, to so that instead of having a text-based chatbot widget, which so many websites do have, that now you can have your website simply speak to people a little Hey there, now. welcome to Eleven Labs. I'm Al, your virtual assistant. To get us started, can I ask what you are interested in about Eleven Labs? I'm interested in everything about Eleven Labs. That's great to hear. So as you can say, see, we were actually having a conversation. It would have gone much further and deeper, of course. It'll take about 20 minutes or so, and I'm just going to show you how to set up a simple chatbot for your website. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to 11labs.io, 11labs.io. And once you're there, then just create a free, press go to app and create a free account. Not going to cost you anything at all. and here I'm in the back end of our account. It's also a free account. Um, so it's you can see that it's pretty straightforward. Now, when you come into 11 Labs, you're going to see this on the left hand side. This is going to be your dashboard. And when you see that, go down to conversational AI. When you're in conversational AI, click agents. When you're over here, you're not going to see anything since you've just got a fresh account, but you're going to go up here and create an AI agent. Now, as you can see, they do have some demo agents over here, but we're not going to worry about that because we want to create a blank one because we want to make it something that works for your business and your website. So we're going to click blank template and we're going to call it Eric. Create agent. And now we're going to set our agent up. So over here we have agent. The agent language is default. We're going to make English, although you can make it another language if you like. You can give it some additional languages to speak, like, for example, Chinese, Arabic, and German. Now you go down, and then we're going to look for the first message, which the chatbot is going to say when it starts talking to you. Anything you like. This is automatically translated to the different languages that you set up here. And then you can go down to System Prompt. Now, System Prompt is pretty important because that's how you tell the chatbot what you want it to do, um, and so on. So you can put in the System Prompt down here. You can write something quite easy and straightforward, but you can also you can go to one of these free online prompt generators. Prompt generator. There you go. We're going to use DocSpot AI just because it pops up there. And this will just give us a slightly, it won't give us anything amazing, incredible, but it'll give us a slightly improved version of a prompt that'll make it uh, nice and clear, give nice clear instructions for your um, for your chatbot. So we're just going to say, you are a, an assistant embedded in the business website of Berlin Electronics. Your job is to assist users in finding out. My job is to assist users in with any questions or queries they may have about our company and ooh, company and product. Always remain courteous and professional. And we're just going to keep it like that. Generate prompt. It's probably not going to give us anything very, very different to that, but it just gives us a nice kind of clear set of instructions. So here we go. And here is our very simple prompt. Now, sometimes this will this will uh, be a bit more complicated. It'll give it guidelines, output format, usage, and other stuff for the chatbot. But this is keeping things pretty standard for the moment and so we're going to take that and we're going to put it into our system prompt over here and best regards Eric 
Dynamic variables like username, for example, we're not going to worry about at the moment. LLM, you decide which of the AI language models you want to use. Um, the default settings here generally work fine, so we're going to keep most of them the same as they are. So this uses Gemini 2.0 Flash, which is cheap, uh, which is free actually, and you can use GPT-4 or Claude or something for some of the more developed LLMs. You have to set up a paid account, put an API key, add that down here, but we're not going to do any of that right now. Temperature, uh, if you have a higher temperature, then it'll be more creative and random. If you have a low temperature, it'll be the opposite. At the moment, we've got it in the middle. That seems to work fine, but you can experiment with that. Token usage is nothing to worry about. Knowledge base is something to think about because the knowledge base is something that we give the chatbot as a knowledge base so that they have knowledge to draw from when they're talking to the user. For example, your business FAQs, product design, product details, telephone numbers, anything, any of the knowledge about your product and your company that you want the chatbot to have access to to pass on to the user. You can put it in a file and upload it. You can write it straight in here as text. Or if you have, for example, an FAQ page, you can put in the URL here. I'm going to put, not going to put anything in here, even though it's a very good thing to do, just for the sake of simplicity. If you want to use RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation, that improves the knowledge base to some extent. But it's pretty fine as it is. Tools give us extra functionality, and that's quite an important thing. We're not going to do anything here because, as I say, it does just fine without tools. But here, the only tool that it's got um, added by default is that the agent can end the call when the user says goodbye or ciao or something. Um, and if there's a silence for more than seven seconds, for example, um, another example of a tool that you might add to improve functionality would be a appointment, which would be uh, the ability for the agent to set up appointments. For that, it would need to be able to access your calendar and then talk to your calendar and then talk back to the chatbot to find out when you're free and available and then make an appointment with the user. That would be a classic example. But there's lots of other tools you can add to give it added functionality that which would come in through a client tool or usually through a webhook. That's something to think about when things get more complicated. Right now, obviously, we're doing a reasonably simple one, so we're not going to worry about that for this tutorial. Workspace secrets, not important. Press save, and then we're going to go to the top again, and we're going to choose our voice. Now, um, until recently, Eleven Labs only provided voices for other companies to do chatbots, so that's their speciality, which makes it a really good chatbot creator for us to use. Firstly, because they've got a whole range of voices. Secondly, because it works very seamlessly. And thirdly, because it improves the latency. So you can choose any one of the voices. Gratitude like. is riches, complaint is poverty. Well, we can choose pretty much from a whole list of voices. You can spend ages listening to people's voices. If you voices. spend your whole life waiting for the storm, you'll never enjoy the sunshine. And get a little bit of wisdom while you're doing it. You can also do you look for German language, Chinese language, etc. Um, you can spend ages finding a voice that you like. We're going to leave it with Eric because I like Eric. Um, it says that we can use Flash, so let's just leave that as a default setting. Again, default setting, pronunciation dictionaries. We don't need anything for our simple use case. Optimizing the streaming latency. These, this, and stability and speed and similarity are things that you can just simply leave as the default setting, or you can experiment with. Can listen to, uh, to your chatbot, have a chat with it, and see if you want to change anything. So this is something that you can just experiment with, i.e. play with uh, to your heart's content. And we're going to go to analysis, where it can analyze the call and the data collection and so on and so on. Again, we're going to leave this blank for the moment. Security, I like to enable authentication ideally. But um, at the moment, Eleven Labs will not let you put the web widget onto the website if you've enabled authentication. So just I'm leaving that off for that reason at the moment. It's no biggie, you know. An allow list. If you only want the chatbot to appear on your website, then that's a pretty good idea to put in your URL over here. And again, you can do it or not do it. It's up to you. Overrides. We have nothing to worry about. Fetching conversation initiation, initiation client data from a webhook. If you can, if you activate this, obviously, if you've got the some pre-saved um, data about the customer, the name, email, their preferences, what they've talked to you about before, and that kind of thing, you can add it here. We haven't, so we're going to leave that there. But that is obviously a possibility. This is again is nothing that really you have to really worry about. 
It's just the number of calls that your chatbot can make at the same time. Why it's set to minus one, I'm not sure, but it seems to work. Daily calls limit, again, 100,000 maximum number of calls allowed per day, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's go up to advanced. Now, time out is that the chatbot, after seven seconds of silence, will close the call because the person might have disappeared. And we also have maximum conversation duration so that it won't go last for longer than 300 seconds at the moment. You can increase that, decrease it, but obviously, uh, even though it's very, very cheap and you get a lot of free credits, and once you have to pay, then it's still extremely cheap, but you don't want to like just keep this running forever if no one's doing anything and um, have to pay more money. Keywords, I haven't actually bothered putting any keywords in because I haven't had a problem with my chatbot so far. This is something that you can put in if you prefer. Again, uh, default setting, we're going to leave that. Client events, default setting, we're going to leave that. Privacy settings, I'm in Europe, in Germany, and we have a very high level of data regulation. So this is, I would turn off store call audio just in case, although I'm not sure exactly the legal ramifications, but you can leave it on, turn it off. That's your decision. And then that's pretty much it, actually. So we go to the code that you're going to embed. And before we embed it into our website, we can just pop down here. Um, you can see it's been collecting feedback during the conversation. At the end of the conversation, or not collecting feedback, just do it during the conversation. And you can change the appearance of it. So you can change the different colors of your chatbot. And you can even put in a link instead. And you can even put in an image where you could put in your logo to appear here or a little face or your avatar or anything you like. And then you just want to take use these text contents to decide what you're going to have written here and over here and so on. Listening status, speaking status, and terms and conditions. So you can, again, you can choose whether you want to do this or not. Again, in Europe, where they're pretty strict and so I generally tend to do that. And I'm going to leave that for the moment, but I've got a feeling that sometimes I need to put in my privacy policy page. <clears throat> but I'm going to leave that enable language selection. I'm going to turn on so that people can choose which language they want to talk in. And so on. And save this, I may get an error. Yeah. So if I go to the widget, then if I ah, here's my problem here. So I'm gonna put that back to orb. See if that fix it. And that is fixed. So now we here is the code. Now we've set up our chatbot. We can test the AI agent if you like, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. So um, this will be to copy the your code for your chatbot. And now all we have to do is put the chatbot onto our web page. So I'm going to show you how to do that on a WordPress website. Um, not this one. On a WordPress website, uh, if you have, don't have a WordPress website, it's pretty much the same kind of deal. So it's very, very straightforward. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm going to show you on WordPress how to put that code in. So if you want it to be on every page on your website, you want to put it in the header of your website. And the easiest way to do that is to go here. Now, I have a multi-site. Which, which is why I've got to go to Network Admin. You probably won't have a multi-site, in which case you just go to your basic website dashboard plugins. But anyway, so I'm on a multi-site, so I've got to go to Network Admin. See my plugins. Okay, I've already got WP Code Lite installed. That's what you want. If I didn't have it installed, I would go to Add New Plugin. I would put in here WP code. I would look for the one that has in its description insert headers and footer scripts. This is a good one from Syed Balki. 
it's already active in my website. If you don't have it installed and activated, just click Install and Activate here, and you're laughing. Now I'm going to go back to my plugins. And on the left-hand side, uh, once I've installed and activated, it will pop up here, not as WP code, but as code snippets, just to make things a little confusing. And just go down to header and footer. Once you've got that open, you find your header. And then you put in your code, as simple as that. Press Save Changes, and that will make that chatbot appear. Just going to do it there. That will make it appear on every page of your website. Do that click. Before you want to check it, uh, if you have an option to clear cache on the browser, on, on your website, I would do that. And also, when you make changes to your website, I always do this, where you go to Chrome, Option, three buttons, Delete Browsing Data. You don't want to delete that. You don't want to delete that. You do want to delete cached images and files. If you're doing changes on your website and nothing turns up, that's usually the culprit. Anyway, so we're going to come back and... Can you visit the site in a new tab? And you will notice that here we have our chatbot installed. It's as simple as that. Now you have your chatbot set up. I'll just click agree. Hi, how can I help you? I don't think you can help me, actually. Thank you for asking. Thanks, Thanks for chatting. Take care. And so that's to get it on all the pages in your website. If, however, you want to put it only on one page, then what you would do is something slightly different. I'm just going to take this out again from here. Um, and again, this, I'm showing this to you how it works in um, how it works in WordPress, but everything's pretty similar. So I'm just going to go to use the default editor in WordPress and choose a an HTML block. If you're using a theme builder like Divi or Elementor, it might be called code block. Just put it in and try it out. So I'm going to use default editor, press the little plus thing, custom HTML, put in my code there, and that's it. Publish. Now, what you might wonder about if you put it into a page, you might think, hmm, this is great. I can put my chatbot widget under the page, under the heading, above an image or something. Unfortunately, you can't do that. No matter where you put it, you're code in, it's always going to appear in the bottom right-hand side. But and that's not such a big deal. So we're just going to check that really quickly. View page. And here we have our chatbot widget just on this page. And that's it. Now you have your chatbot widget all set up. Yeah, it's easy as that. Um, as I say, to get more complicated, you want to, if you want to put in a tool to do an appointment setting, for example, that's all great stuff. And uh, we can show you that in another tutorial coming up. Or if you need that done more quickly, if you want us to take care of it for you, just get in touch and we'll be happy to take care of that for you. Also, what's really great, obviously here we have our support agent on the website. You can have the same support agent via phone so that if someone calls you up on the phone, you could have the same or a different voice agent you could have the same voice with the same information chatting away to them on the phone. Again, that's something that we're happy to help you set up. It's a little bit more complicated. Mm, took us a while to get it together. And um, yeah, otherwise, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get in touch with us on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or on our website. And we look forward to more tutorials with you. Thanks so much and have a nice day.